when a body is in motion that means here in simple harmonic motion it has energy as it is in motion it has a, a kinetic energy and uh, because of the change in shape or because of uh, change in the height there is a kinetic a potential energy also so a body under simple harmonic motion has two energy one is the kinetic energy as well as the potential energy so let's consider such a simple harmonic motion like as in a, a spring under oscillation and uh, let's find its total energy so let's uh, denote the displacement as x and the displacement changes with the time t and uh, the maximum displacement we called as the amplitude marked as a so the displacement takes the format x is equal to a cos omega t plus phi zero we already told this is the way how we represent a simple harmonic motion and here a shows the maximum displacement and the displacement at any time t varies as a function of sine or cos and uh, to show the initial phase we give a phi zero now this is the displacement from this we can take the velocity because our kinetic energy we are trying to find the energy one is kinetic energy other one is potential energy kinetic energy is half mv square so in that mass is m v is the velocity velocity can be found from the displacement x so differentiating this displacement we get the velocity so how we can differentiate this d by dt of x x is this a cos omega t plus phi zero we know a is the amplitude which is not changing so it's not undergoing any differentiation and cos of this cos of an angle theta if you differentiate we get a sign minus a sign for example d by d theta of cos theta if you differentiate you get minus sin theta here d by dt of here we get d by dt of cos of omega t plus phi zero this is what the function we have here so here result will be minus sine of this theta that is omega t plus phi zero into d by dt of uh, omega t plus phi zero phi zero is a constant it will not change with the time so omega t will change so here if i take i get the result as minus sine of omega t plus phi zero into d by dt of omega t which will be omega into dt by dt omega is constant i can take outside here dt by dt will be my one so minus sine omega t plus phi zero into omega this is what the differentiation of cos of omega t plus phi zero will give so which will give you the velocity as minus a omega sin omega t plus phi zero this omega is here a is already there minus of this minus a omega sin of omega t plus phi zero so if you find if you substitute in the equation half mv square v is this square that square while squaring you get nine minus is positive a a square omega square sin square of this also one more thing we have uh, previously from the older derivations we have omega square as k by m so if i take this m here m omega square will become k so here is uh, m and omega square that is k so i get half into k a square sin square omega t plus phi zero i get half into k a square omega sin square omega t plus phi zero this is the expression for the kinetic energy of the simple harmonic motion similarly we have a potential energy also uh, in work energy power you have studied that springs potential energy is given by half kx square that is kx square by 2 here x is a cos omega t plus phi zero so if you substitute in this equation you get the potential energy as half k a square cos square omega t plus phi zero so if you add these two you get the total energy that is 
if you add these two we get half k a square sin square omega t plus phi zero half k a square cos square omega t plus phi zero so half k a square half k a square is common here I can take it outside this is sin square omega t plus phi zero plus cos square omega t plus phi zero if I add this I should get one I should get it as one so this is half k a square so for a simple harmonic oscillator energy total energy is half k a square k is the force constant it's a constant a is the maximum displacement which is the amplitude so once you make an oscillation with a maximum displacement that is the amplitude once you give an amplitude it has an energy that is half k a square this total energy remains constant because a and k are constant which means the total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is a constant and uh, this is followed by the conservation of energy the variation of energy the variation of energy let's represent in the form of a graph so here you can show the energy and uh, here let's show the position displacement x from the zero mean position and uh, minus a x so let's take an example and look at this that's better we have a spring here and the spring is attached to the wall there is a body under oscillation having mass m i take it to one side stretch it it has potential energy release it while it is oscillating it has kinetic energy so this is at x is equal to zero mean position here it has an it has a potential energy as zero no potential energy because it is in a relaxed condition but when i stretch it up to here it has a potential energy maximum potential energy release it its potential energy decreases here it has a maximum potential energy in the opposite direction negative maximum value but while oscillating let's see when i release it from here when it is up to here its velocity is zero but when it comes to this side its velocity increases at the middle its velocity become maximum as it goes to the left side left side up to here here after its kinetic energy is decreasing its speed will decrease here when it reaches kinetic energy becomes zero it will stop for a while there as the kinetic energy is zero again it returns here when it go back to here middle point kinetic energy is maximum again when it goes to the other side kinetic energy decreases but potential energy will be increased so once it reaches here the kinetic energy is again zero that is why it returns back so this if i represent in the form of a graph it will look like this at mean position its potential energy here is zero so potential energy is zero but potential energy is maximum at x is equal to a at x is equal to a potential energy this is this graph shows potential energy so this potential energy energy is in the y axis so energy becomes maximum at x is equal to a and x is equal to minus a but potential energy is zero at the mean position similarly kinetic energy let's analyze kinetic energy is maximum at the middle when x is equal to zero kinetic energy is maximum that's why the peak is here kinetic energy is zero on either extreme here and here kinetic energy becomes energy becomes zero so this single graph shows the energy variation both the kinetic energy as well as potential energy let's consider this uh, oscillation of the spring a little more so here is a spring under oscillation and uh, this is the equilibrium position a spring without any force equilibrium position or mean position this is stretched to a place up to here released it it undergoes oscillation it goes to the left side maximum here it comes up to here so we told the force equation is f is equal to minus kx and we can equate it with uh, the uh, second law then we can write f is equal to ma ma is minus kx these two acceleration we told we can represent it as d square x by dt square then we get uh, md square x by dt square is equal to minus kx bring it to the left side 
we get an equation m d square x by dt square plus k x is equal to zero. And if you divide divide this, you get it as divide this completely with the mass, we get it as uh, m d square x by dt square plus k by m x is equal to zero. And we already told this k by m is nothing but omega square. Omega is two pi by t. So two by k by m is two pi by t the whole square. Up to here we already discussed. So here what we do is this k by m we take it as omega square. Omega is two pi by t. So k by m is 2 pi by t the whole square which means root of k by m should be equal to 2 pi by t if it is root of k by m as 2 pi by t we can write t is equal to 2 pi root m by k so this equation is true for uh, oscillation of a spring whether you oscillate this like this the spring in the horizontal way even if you oscillate the spring in the vertical direction like what you do in the lab, a vertical oscillation also, this equation is correct. The time period is 2 pi root m by k, where m is the mass you are attaching with the spring and k is the force constant. So here the attached object's mass is m and k is the spring constant or force constant. So the time period of oscillation is 2 pi root m by k. Now let's come to the second example of simple harmonic motion. One we discussed that is about the spring. Another one is a simple pendulum. So let's consider a simple pendulum. A simple pendulum consists of a point mass, a very small mass, suspended by a flexible, inelastic and weightless string. So it should be in inelastic. The string you are taking should be inelastic. So this is the object and this object is known as a bob. This is known as a bob, B-O-B. That is connected to a light string, inextensible, weightless and uh, inelastic spring. It should be supported at the rigid point. So this is the rigid support. This is the pendulum. So you have a, a bob and its mass is m. So this object has a mass m, bob of mass m. And this string has a length l. And it is taken to one side and released. It executes a to and fro motion. So when it is in oscillation, this there is a force acting through the string that is a tension. And this tension will act towards a suspension, to the point of suspension. So this is the direction of the tension. Of course, the weight of this body acts vertically downward. So wherever this is, this weight, its weight mg is acting downward. So this is the weight of this body acting downward. So two forces, one is the tension acting upward, weight is acting downward. Now, as it oscillates, it makes an angle here, theta, with the mean position. So if this is theta, and this is the displacement x, here is a displacement x. Weight mg is acting downward. I can split this weight mg into two directions, two mutually perpendicular directions. One in this direction and the one in this direction. So here this angle will be also theta if this is theta. If this is theta angle, this also will be theta angle. So in terms of this theta, I can split this mg, weight mg into two components. One is the mg cos theta downward mg sin theta in this horizontal direction so those who have doubt on this how it comes you can go back to vector chapter and see the resolution of vectors weight is a vector quantity mg is a vector quantity so i can split this mg into two mg cos theta mg sin theta here nearby the angle theta cos component will come other side sine component will come we have already discussed this now as long as this pendulum is oscillating only in the horizontal direction, not it, it's not moving upward or downward, this tension T and uh, mg cos theta should be equal. T is equal to mg cos theta, I can write. And one more thing, there is a restoring force. That restoring force is given by mg sin theta. So horizontal force is restoring force. That restoring force is mg sin theta. So let's take those two equations. One is T is equal to mg cos theta. The tension is mg cos theta and the restoring force is m minus mg sin theta. 
the angle is, as long as we take the angle is small angle we can approximately take it as sin theta as theta so restoring force is minus mg theta this theta we will express in a different way here look at this figure again let us take this angle theta angle theta while well, this is oscillating this makes a small uh, part of a small circular part so this is like an arc with a radius l and an angle theta so from this i can write theta is equal to arc by radius that is x by l so considering that i can take theta is equal to arc by radius that is x by l my restoring force is mg x by l so this mg x by l i can equate with the second law that is f is equal to ma equate this ma is equal to a minus mg x by l then the mass and mass will cancel a is equal to g x by l i'll get acceleration is minus g by g x by l and we already told simple harmonic motion any simple harmonic motion acceleration is proportional to displacement and act in the opposite direction where uh, this there was a constant that is omega square x that comes from the previous one hope you remember this f is equal to minus kx and from that we came to uh, equating with ma we got it as a is proportional to x then we told uh, minus k by m a is minus k by mx and a is equal to minus omega square x k by m was omega square so considering that idea we have this now we got a is equal to minus g by lx that a we can equate with minus omega square x where omega square is equal to g by l in that case omega square will be g by l omega is 2 pi by t we know so omega square 2 pi by t the whole square is g by l so from this if you rearrange we get t is equal to 2 pi root l by g so similar to the spring we got an equation spring we got 2 pi root m by k but here we are getting for pendulum we get t equal to 2 pi root l by g so this is an equation for the simple harmonic uh, motion in the case of a simple pendulum now a pendulum cannot oscillate for long time because of friction its energy reduces its energy will be reduced due to air friction and uh, if its energy is reduced we call it as a damped oscillation the amplitude decreases gradually with the time that is called an, a damped oscillation its reason is just a friction so if you want to maintain a, a particular amplitude for the oscillation throughout you have to apply an external force so a free oscillation that means without any external force once you disturb the oscillation happens that is a free oscillation it's always a damped oscillation means its energy will be lost so if you want to maintain a particular oscillation that means always you keep the same amplitude we have to apply an external force that is that kind of oscillation is called a forced oscillation so forced oscillation is a a sustained oscillation with the same amplitude that is with the help of an external force whenever this this external force you can have a frequency for that for example to understand that let's consider a pendulum that is taken to one side released it it goes to this side so there is a natural oscillation that has a frequency natural naturally this will oscillate freely it will oscillate its amplitude decreases so suppose whenever this body reaches here when it is about to move to this side you apply an external force what happens is this amplitude will increase it can go far whenever this body comes to this side when it is about to reach here you apply an external force in the opposite direction its amplitude will decrease you know this is a general expression like a, a very simple life phenomenon like uh, you are on a swing when you are about when you are oscillating you are think you are already in motion your friend is standing behind you and uh, he is pushing you like when you reach back to him if you push you will be falling down your amplitude will be decreased 
but if you are about to move forward if your friend is pushing you your displacement or your amplitude will become more more and more it will increase so if your frequency the frequency in which you are oscillating and the frequency in which your friend is pushing you if they are matching your your amplitude will be maximum you will reach maximum height maximum displacement that condition is called a resonance so suppose the frequency of your oscillation and the frequency of the force you, you your friend is applying you when they are matching with the displacement will be maximum that condition is called a resonance so the force ex externally applied is called a driving force so the driving force frequency and the frequency of oscillation when it is matching it attains a particular condition called a resonance and uh, that due to that resonance we get a maximum displacement